the Neo, known as D on Money, ZA. Hello. And Trader Petri and Simon Brown. Uh, the lovely D is thinking about buying a car. Petri just made a terrible decision about buying a car. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be chatting to Simon about the economics of actually buying a car. The like only the one that actually knows what one should yeah. do. So, the first rule of buying a car is dead, dead, dead simple. Don't buy a new one. Petri? Uh, <laughs> no, I bought a new car. <laughs> Mine was stolen, so I had to buy a new car. No, no, no. I mean, don't buy one off the showroom. Buy one that's got miles and kilometers already on it. Because your car loses 15... I mean, the trick is, when you buy a car, there's VAT included in the price, right? Mm -hmm. When you sell the car, you can't charge VAT. So, you immediately, you've lost the VAT. Okay, you did a fancy lease thing with some small print. Mm, actually turned out to just do a normal installment okay. in the car straight out. But a car loses its value. A 100k car, a week old, it's now an 80k car. So buy the 80k car because... So what I used to always do was go and buy a one-year demo. So it's 2016. Buy your car towards the end of the year, November, December. Sales people are on pressure for their annual targets. Um, and buy that year's demo car if you can because it'll be relatively low mileage and you'll get easy 20% knocked off the price. And then, you know, get three dealerships and play them off each other. Go to that dealer and say, boom, boom, boom. Let me ask you, Dee, mm -hmm. what is your situation? Okay, so I'm looking at buying a car. Not new, but I have been looking at demos. Um, I've got three options that I, of cars that I really love. Um, the Mazda 2, um, 2015, I think. Um, the Opel Astra and a Hyundai i20. Those are my three choices. I was looking at demos, so um, because they've got a little bit of mileage, but you still get a service plan, and it's not a brand new car, and you know, yeah. So for all the reasons Simon mentioned. Yeah, and it almost is a brand new car. I mean, some some of those demos even smell new carish, and mm -hmm. although these days you you can buy that. The other point, Dean, you mentioned in all those cars, is we don't want to go and buy some exotic car. You know that 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 you want a regular popular car. Because That's a little rich coming from you, don't you think, Simon? At my age. <laughs> what, what I mean by that is 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 what, what you need to be careful of is that you bought some fancy car, like you bought a smart car ten years ago, and then smart pulled out of the country. Now you can't sell it because there's no after service. You want a car that when that there's hundreds on the road. And I twenties, but all those cars that you mentioned, and I don't know quite what a Mazda two looks like. But the point is, Mazda's going to be here. They're still going to be selling it. So when you come to sell the car, it means that there is a market for it. It means there's services and after support for it. Uh, you see, that's that's why I bought a new car because the previous one I had was also a new car, right? So mm -hmm. you buy a new car because you get the maintenance plan with it. So but the only thing I have to change in that car is the tires. I don't need not even the windscreen wipers, just the tires. But and I take it, they fix it. Yeah, but the at, the end of, at the end of three years, you don't own your car. No, 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 I do. I'm, I'm, he didn't do a lease on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to do the lease agreement, but they do kind of, I don't want to be rude, they do make... Uh, onerous. Onerous, uh, you know, they charge you a lot of interest, which is not good. But you um, can transfer, so, I mean, I bought demo cards and you get the remainder yeah, of the service plan. You do plan. get the remainder of the service plan with some of the, them that I've seen. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was... Um, with the Mazda particularly, the one thing I love about them is their resale value is so high, even the previous um, generation of Mazda 2s, you can barely find any. People don't want to get rid of them, and for me, that says, great car, must have. Yeah. And then work out what it's gonna cost you. So, you can drive a car to about 150,000 kilometers. That's the mm -hmm. absolute latest that you can sell a car. After that, it's too old. 100,000 is nice. Let's say 100,000. If you're doing, and let's say you do 10,000 kilometers per year of driving, if your car's got 10,000 on the clock, it's going to take you nine years to get to 100,000. This car's going to be good to you for nine years. If you're taking some debt and it's four years of debt that you've got to pay, that then gives you five years that you can save to buy the next car. Because ultimately, your goal has to be, and you young folks, not yet, mm -hmm. but your goal has to be you walk in, you pay cash for a car. Yes. Um, a cash car is, is where we have to get to. But you've got to get that first pile of cash. Um, now, I'm there because I've had three, four cars in my life, and I did get the first one on debt. Um, and then after that, it's just been, you know, after that, the next one, I think I did only a 30% loan, and thereafter, it's just been pure cash. Mm. Cool. Pietri, what would you do differently if you could do it differently? Uh, you buy a sports car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys.